On today's episode of That Mental Ginger Show, we welcome back London-based musician Talia. Talia came on the third episode of That Mental Ginger Show, time when it hadn't even hit 100 subscribers. And now she's back, and we both had very successful career turns as of late. I'm interested to hear what Talia had to say in our long overdue catch-up, and I hope you are too. Let's get into it. All right, trip. Talia, an absolute pleasure to see you. How have you been? Yeah, I've been good. Um, you know, music wise, I've been good. Um, health wise good as well um also like having time to relax um I found that that's really important and that's something that's probably quite prominent at you know at this moment um, yeah definitely it's been a it's been a bit of a roller coaster what of a, a year hasn't it yeah and I'm all, almost like preparing also for the Christmas season that I mm. know like, just for me but for a lot of musicians it's going to be quite busy yeah so, we just need that time yeah so what gigs have you got coming up anyway um i've got like restaurant gigs i also play in care homes so i've also got um yeah quite a busy schedule coming up and wow. some gigs as well yeah um, yeah definitely restaurants are quite a main thing at the moment in terms of like at the weekend and mm. uh, yeah, I just did a restaurant. I played there for the first time last week and they seem to like me and they're inviting me to do a few gigs until Christmas, including New Year. Oh, wow. Uh. Yeah, so that's good. And I was very like, I always get, you know, I always worry a bit about how people are going to receive me, like how are the customers you know going to receive my music and I felt that in that restaurant it was quite cool because um basically the cuisine is uh Portuguese so that's what my mm. you know, that, those are my roots and so yeah. there's Portuguese food going around we also celebrated like chestnut day where you drink it with the new wine it's very traditional Mm-hmm. And yeah, and so there were a few Portuguese, but there was a mixture of people, definitely like from all different backgrounds. I mean, even my friend from uni, who is actually from Trinidad, she came with her brother. Yeah. And yeah, she lives in Paris at the moment, but she came over and I just invited her to see me. And then we had a real good catch up at the end and I drove her home. And so mm. that was lovely. And uh, yeah, it just feels like just kind of right you know but I don't want to be like yes you know yeah. I, I have to take each day as it comes and uh yeah it felt good it felt mm. good because I sung in, in some songs in Portuguese some in English and I do mm. Spanish as well and Brazilian yeah so it's go down well um wow. it's in a really good area in London it's in Battersea so like a half, yeah actually half an hour walk to the Battersea power station which my friend had been to yeah yeah, so yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just great to see you, like, uh, especially considering like, when you were on the show the very first time, you were the third guest on. I hadn't even hit 100 subscribers yet, and uh, yeah, just crossed 9,000 now. So I, I was looking. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's so hard to believe, and it was why I wanted like to get special ones that were there from the beginning and back on and give you a bit more of a more of a boost and get everybody that remembered from back then a wee catch up to see how you were and what like, everything that you've been doing like is well it doesn't just stop after the interview as you know I keep a, keep tabs on what you're doing and the, the work you've been doing all the gigs you've been having like, and check out your wee Facebook lives that pop up every now and then of your gigs as well like, they're, they're absolutely brilliant thank you very much I really appreciate that and I appreciate you know like loyal followers like yourself um like support what i do because um i definitely believe in what i do and i believe that like music like all the arts is a really important thing to be doing especially at this time 
yeah. in the world, you know, when we need a lot more of this to lighten people's days up and brighten them up. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, since uh, we are talking about it anyway, since this is all kind of kicked off with cost of living and stuff like that, have your gigs increased or have they decreased? Uh, since when? Well, since we um, kind of you know when the cost of living crisis started to hit, so about mid-2022, oh, like, right. do, did you see a spike in your gigs or did you, have you seen a decrease? Well, just so I can get it from, from the troops on the ground, so to speak. Yeah, that's a good question. Um... I would say that lockdown was really bad for musicians, mm. including myself. Um, I was doing like ridiculous amount, you know, hardly anything basically of, of gigs and they involved like online for a very cheap price. But then after lockdown, I must, so I ended up being on universal credit, which a lot of artists, dancers, um, musicians that I actually were in my circle of friends, um, we decided to go on because there was no way that we would be able to pay our rent and still commit to living our lives and continuing yeah. our lives because it was virtually impossible to be in a pub or in a restaurant with people around. It was just a no-go and I really had to respect that as well. So I definitely respected that. And I also know that as a singer and being as a self-employed as well, that if you if I was to catch COVID, which I did in the end, but it it happened mm. like about six months ago um yeah because that's when i tried to get you back on the first time and you got hit with it i felt so bad that's all right and you know i had to catch it sometime <laughs> mm. i've some st still not got it yet oh well done you well done yeah you. my entire yeah. family went down with it my, everybody in the families went down with it i've still not been hit wow you've got a good mm. immune system then i think it's uh, just the being ginger <laughs> I, I think maybe they're just going right you've been hit with everything else we'll give you a break <laughs> that's it it works um yeah. we should follow your example dye our hair ginger <laughs> just uh, well i was practicing isolation before it was cool that was bullying and, and depression <laughs> it, it worked out so well <laughs> Yeah, so um, regarding like COVID, so I caught it and then I realised that, Jesus, if you catch it as well as a musician and an artist, that's it. You also like, you're having seven days off, for example, in my case. And yeah. I didn't do one gig where I got paid. Like there's no cover for that. So that's the risk as well that we take mm -hmm. as musicians. But in no way does that put me off. Um, yeah, and then after that, so I guess after 2020, when everything was bad, um, actually things started happening for me. So, um, for example, in the care care home mm. um, world, I had a friend who lives in Taunton. I think it's Taunton, like Somerset. Mm. And he was asked, he's a trump, so he, he sings and he plays trumpet. Oh, and wow. He, yeah, he's amazing. Um, yep. Luigi Madel and... I met him in London um, through music. I've been to see a few shows of him. And he basically, what happened, uh, someone in London had asked it from a care home, had asked him if he could perform at their care home in London. And unfortunately, he's all the way in Somerset. So he recommended me. Aww. And so that was a direct job that I got with this lovely home <laughs> who somehow they seem to love me and don't ask me why, but I really do feel... I don't know. I feel such a deep connection with everyone there. Um, mm. Like the receptionists, the people that book me in, the carers. They mm -hmm. all like, you know, I feel like they're all like, woo. And yeah. Like and in a way, I can see why you would get, uh, get asked back because uh, my past life working in the NHS, one of the times uh, that I did work was in the care sector. Well, uh, receptionists for uh, a couple of care homes as well. And you've got that type of energy that they would need like you're very warm you're very compassionate what well, the music that you play what well, is it's got a nice kind of that takes me back kind of memory to it as well well and i think that's that's something that what well, you would have put a smile on a lot of people's faces because well, i know what you're like well i know how passionate you are so they would love to hear it i could imagine someone going they don't play music like that anymore <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. Actually, yeah, it's true. Because when they see, like, the people that live there, when they see the accordion, they're always like, oh, that accordion. And the, the next thing that I've, I've actually leveled up in the way that I dress as well. I wish mm. I had a dress to show you, but I literally have this, like, rainbow dress that I've oh. invested in. I mean, it was only 20 quid, but I bought that, and that seems to have worked wonders. So mm. even the way you dress and you present yourself and you come in, like, they're already going... Wow. I, I mean, I've had comments where, oh, you, you're brilliant. And I said, what are, you, what are you saying? I haven't even started my set. So it's just like something really beautiful. And, and there is, I think, a genuine warmth about me anyway. Mm -hmm. which I believe lies in every human being. You've just got to access it. Yep. But um, there is a warmth that as soon as I walk in, I just, yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm home. I feel like I'm contributing towards society and I think if you find something where you feel that you contribute to society then you're definitely on the right road yeah it's not always the easy road but it's definitely worthwhile and um yeah so I feel like I've made cheerleaders at that home and mm -hmm. through there um via that there was an agent who heard about me yeah. Um, who contacted that home and then the receptionist at that home gave me her number and said look I think you'd be great if you contacted this so eight this agent who probably will get you more work so I contacted her and I mean she's just amazing the great thing about this agent is that she's also a singer and a performer yeah and she's just the most beautiful soul and I'm so happy that I'm in connection with her so she also has given me some jobs then somebody else who's another agent mm -hmm. contacted me um just because he found my name online and mm. uh, he's now got me on his website and he gives me some local gigs and he's always really lovely to deal with like really straightforward no no bullshit <laughs> yeah but literally uh, nothing. you've been on the show before you know that i'm okay with swearing uh, <laughs> okay your kids aren't watching it <laughs> no no definitely not that they were on they were on the ginger engine they were on the my thomas tank one well oh, uh, that's so sweet yeah what they uh, just after they turned four what we went on we did it well I basically used them as lab rats but it was all good <laughs> well they enjoyed it and they they still go up to me like daddy can we watch our video and i'm like Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> it just boosts the views. I'm okay with that. <laughs> now, one thing that you touched on earlier on, which uh, I, I know a lot of people don't realise when artists are, what, you know, trying to pursue their craft, is about them having to go on benefits just to kind of pay the bills and, and stay afloat. A lot of artists that I've came in contact with since doing this again, what, they've all had the same story where people just think oh they're doing this now and they're fine and off they go and then they see them down at the job center and they're like what are you do down here it's like well i may have i may be there but i've still got to sign on it's a reality that no one really talks about i think yeah yeah definitely um i mean i've i've gone past that now like i'm, mm -hmm. I'm not part of, and that ended probably more than a year ago, but I can imagine that there are people still struggling as mm -hmm. they try to find their feet. And I, I think, yeah, I think there's nothing to be shame, shamed about. Um, I think it's actually a good reason. That's why we do pay our taxes and, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to support these people like us that are bringing a lot of goodness alongside other people who have to do different things, you know, like, nurses that have to go into mm -hmm. training whatever and, and you you don't have that but I think if you're an artist and you're trying to just fight for this way that has never been paved out you don't really have a, an amazing support system really it's only you have the support from the people that believe in you mm -hmm. government wise you don't really so you do need that you know financial help and I, I never, and I always vow to myself, I never want to be on any financial help. But I think at that point in my career, yeah, I did need it. Because I kind of felt that this COVID wasn't going to go on forever and there was going to be light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So I, I just I just went for it. And, I, and I'm glad that I did because it allowed me to work on my music. To, mm -hmm. you know and even do my live facebooks which weren't getting paid for 
but also showing people and sharing my music with people um, and showing people what I do. That's basically mm -hmm. what it is. I love your Facebook lives as well, especially ones that when you're at gigs what, and you're getting to see the crowd's reaction as well. And what, just everything about it, like just from the lighting, you there singing, what, the crowds, it's so, you're, you feel like you're there with you. It's so atmospheric. I love it. Uh, well, what, I do keep a, an eye on it because I'm oh, I'm thanks. always really supportive of everything that you've done. Thank you. I might do well, some more then. <laughs> yeah. So one of the other questions is, uh, have you been back in the studio doing work on any other albums? Because the last time you were on, what, that was it. It was there. Pride in Place, the album. I was what, so happy to see it. I know. Um, that's kind of like on a standstill at the moment hmm. due to me doing many gigs. Um. I feel like a great pull inside me when I'm not, you know, I guess not doing my gigs and say that I'm driving or something. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, that song that I've just started in the studio, I'm like, I've got to do it, you know, and yeah. I've got to carry on. Oh, like there are these magical people as well around that I feel that I can really work with and that are happy and they're on the sidelines and they're like, when you're ready, we're ready. And I've got that. So I do have it, but I don't want to be pushing it so much in terms of like, if I'm going to start advertising, which I started to at some point, I, I started to like go on Facebook Live and say I was going to start it. But, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't really do the, you know, the work anymore. It just kind of faded away with all my busyness of actually being out there and performing. Hmm. But there's definitely a very big itch inside of me to get those songs out, and um, and yeah, there, there's a lot there going on. Well, that's good because that, that's what we want. We want it, we want it back in the studio and doing what you love. But at the same time, the fact that you're saying you've not been in because you've been so busy gigging, we still want that for you as well. That's where the money is coming for you at the minute. That's where the joy is coming from because when. When I asked you about the studio there, like the smell kind of went a little. But when you started talking about the gigs, it came right back. So already I can see like that's the route you prefer to go down. Like is being in amongst it and being amongst the crowds and being amongst the audience and feeling the buzz. Like that's 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 a, that's a like, very much a dying art at the minute because everybody's like you know get everything in the studio and then oh maybe we'll take it out. We don't know. We don't know if we'll take it out to people people scare me yeah. uh, I, I i definitely think that there's a bit of everything i mean there's a i think now because i'm also playing in this portuguese restaurant i'm having to like focus on learning the portuguese side you know or, or learning more songs that are portuguese orientated um, i'm also kind of being a dj in the middle so there's that at the same time i know that if I do my original, it's not just going to be like, oh my God, record label just picked me up. It's not about that. It's mm -hmm. about that then once I have my original, I can then, originals, that then I can learn them off and be able to bring them into my repertoire. And that's mm -hmm. what I want to be doing. And I want them to touch people. I want those songs to touch people's hearts. And hopefully pe there will be people that resonate with the words and, um, I'm also trying to figure out through, I, I think, sorry, I stop in the middle, but while I do originals, I think what I'm trying to do and what I will do is find what type of music am I going to be like creating? Because I do have Portuguese in me and mm -hmm. I sometimes think that that would be lovely to bring out. So at the moment, like when I'm driving, I also listen to different artists, yeah. artists that maybe come from a Portuguese African background as well. And I like to see how they use their roots in the music as well. Yeah. So I, I, I like to be inspired. And then slowly while I'm in the studio, hopefully there will be something that will just emerge from me. And yeah, I, I don't know how it's actually going to work, but I, I would believe it's going to be spontaneous, also led by inspiration, which I think yeah. that's always been the case. Yeah, and embracing who you are as well, like the uniqueness of you, what 
you can do songs in like so many different languages like, and you've got so much so many different cultures that you can tap into like from like your own previous experience it's also it reminds, uh, reminds me i was going to ask you is there going to be a portuguese tour are you going to go uh, back to portugal and what like, do we do we run around i want to move there <laughs> hey life goal oh, yeah. Do you know what? I was so upset today because the English are saying that they're going to um, have the nuclear plant, you know, and when I when I saw where it is, it's like literally three hours from London. And I was like, I should move. <laughs> and then I was looking up Portugal and I was like nuclear, you know, plants in Portugal. And actually they've got none. And if they do have one, I think they did have one at some point that it's closed down. So, yeah. I don't know, and they believe in a lot of renewable energy, and this is also another thing that I, I'm quite passionate about. You know, like um, helping the planet as well. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely, well, it's. I mean, everybody was what like, used to say, you know, climate change was like make believe, and they were like, oh, it's all a bunch of hippies and all that rubbish. And now, ironically, when everybody said, when we went into lockdown. It was yeah. like, we've got such great weather and we can't go out and enjoy it. And I'm like, yeah, we've got the great weather because you can't go out. That's the point. You're not doing anything to feck everything up outside. That's the gist. Well, if, ever, if ever there was a prime example of how much we are fecking over that this planet, it happened during lockdown. Well, my own nature got a wee bit of a breather. Yes, yeah. I agree. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. So stay inside, everybody. Safe when you're going to her gigs. <laughs> there we go. Make sure, make sure I look after you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yep. you so much. I know it's quite weird that you mentioned, like you know, talking about like moving to uh, Portugal because the iron is like me and my wife have been talking about uh, leaving Scotland. Wow. What? Well, um. What? Well, because uh, her brother stays in Hull. What? Well, and he's been down there for about twenty, oh, like, over twenty odd years now, like, and. Well, she's just well, and Alison just misses him because like only real kind of. She's got family up here, but it's slowly kind of dwindling, and I always feel bad when she has to leave her brother because they're very, very close. But and I just keep thinking, like you know, I'm doing all this stuff, and it's mainly online, so I literally can just pack up a laptop and go. But if Alison can get something down there and it's closer to her brother, why not? Well, so I think it's been something that lockdown brought out by a lot of us was that the the life's too short thing. I definitely got that. I was like, right, uh, I'm not doing the nine to five anymore. I'm taking the shot. I'm going well for done it. You. I'm so proud of you as well, how far you've come and like believed in yourself. You know, yeah. and even if there are ups and downs, because I don't, I don't believe that we always believe in ourselves, even from the start, there's going to be ups. Like I certainly didn't believe myself from the offset. You know, there was a mm. lot of like, there was even like criticism that comes to you and sometimes it's constructive criticism mm -hmm. but then all of that has its beauty you know if you have this drive and this belief that you first of all you want to better yourself and you want to be good because we're not going to be good straight away mm -hmm. unless like you're born with a super talent but that's hardly the case even if you have are born with a talent you do need to hone it and um mm -hmm. I think, yeah, there's something, you know, you will believe in yourself over time. And that's the thing. It's about not giving up in what you do. And you certainly have proved that. And it's so beautiful to mm. see that. And Thank it's you. great to have the support network from you as well, because you're definitely one of those people that I know are there, even if mm. we don't talk all the time. But I know that you support what I do. And I, in turn, support what you do. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful thing to do that because we're also creating our our own community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important in our days to also create a community where communities where like minded people believe in certain things. And even, OK, if your opinions differ, also that can happen. But mm -hmm. on the whole, like working towards a common goal and you believe in kindness and compassion and spreading the light and yeah, I don't want to get too hippie, but because I don't think I am that hippie as much as I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I, I believe we live in the world where you've got to, you know, kind of be like that and not just, whoa, everything's cool, man. Like, you also mm. do have to do the work. So then yeah. it's about finding that balance. Yeah, definitely. Well, and it's something that 
a lot of us do kind of go through where we're thinking what we're not sure about what we want to do and how, how to go about go, you know, going for it and major self-doubt. And when you finally do it, you're like, wow, I actually did it. It's it's, <laughs> it, it's crazy. And it's, it's yeah, and it's something that I've noticed as well. Like um, since I've been do, doing better with the stuff, I've been getting a lot, like I said, I've been getting a lot more trolling lately and a lot more people kind of, you know, giving me abuse and things like that. And back then it used to really get to me like when I was what, what, what a few years ago and now it's like I see it as a badge of honor because it means I'm doing something right when I, when I was at, when I was in the nine to five jobs like no one bothered with me because I wasn't doing anything with my life and now that I am people are like mm, we don't like this we attack you and I'm like, and I'm like bring it on yeah just what? allow it because you're creating some sort of movement um yeah if we just like follow the sheep then it's not that cool is it following the sheep and you're not really noticed you're just another sheep in all of it um yeah. but the I mean, Alison loved the sheep, the sheep because she lived in a farm but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> yeah I know when the sheep but in the good way <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't matter what um what, what about the actual sheep. Just don't get caught up in the the mundane. Let the sheep be free. Yes, I agree. Mm. Which mm -hmm. you can see sheep that are free, you know, mm. and it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My wife and I actually were out this afternoon, and we just saw like a a few of the sheep, and Alison just automatically just went. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it's the sheep whisperer. <laughs> that's so sweet yep. oh that's lovely I, I know no, she's been absolutely amazing with all of this because like, the last few weeks what well, is where I've had my bad patch where things haven't gone so well and what been a lot of self doubt and things like that it always gets there at this time of year like when it gets closer to like holiday time you want to make sure that like, the kids uh, have a great Christmas and stuff and sadly a lot of that revolves around the old moolah and doing this type of work it's not as regular what is is a normal nine to five and it's like you get the days i wake up and i'm like did i do the right thing did i do the right thing and yeah. then yeah. having those little moments with allison and having little moments with the boys just reminds me yeah i'm doing the right thing because yeah. i can look at them in the eye and say i'm do may not be the wealthiest they may not be the richest guy but i'm a lot happier than i was yes and you know when they see you that you're happy they'll definitely be happy too yeah, no, definitely. Well, and one thing that I did want to ask, like, because I've been doing stand up comedy lately. What, well, uh, yeah, yeah, I know it's been what well, it's been one that's not really been my choice. It's been kind of like Godfather 3. I thought I was out, and they just keep pulling me back in. <laughs> but one thing that I notice people do on, well, on those kind of gigs, if they've got a bigger gig, they'll go to their set material of, you know, this is stuff I know make people laugh, let's go for it. And then if they're doing like, kind of smaller gigs they'll try out different things to see how it works with the crowd like what yeah. jokes land what jokes don't yeah. is there a similar thing musician wise as well like if if you were going to somewhere that you were like well okay there's a little bit there's gonna be a bit more clientele <laughs> we'll, we'll break out we'll break out the good ones and then if there's ones where it's like okay right in our week let's test this one out and see who likes it to add it to the set yeah, I think that's a really good question because I think you can, like comedy, do that sort of thing and you can test your boundaries depending on the audience that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I would have said also um, once I have one original song that I can actually even just get that, do you know what I mean? Get that out in the right context where I feel yeah. comfortable delivering it, delivering it. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just something that I was thinking about when I was doing, because I was doing yeah. a gig on Friday. Well, I got dragged into it and I was like, I'll try out some stuff and see how it went. Don't get me wrong, it bombed, but at least I tried it. Definitely. <laughs> and I was like, Woo. How many recordings? Let me know, like, of you performing or something, if you ever do any, you know, that it's public. We actually just did one. Uh, I'm, at, I'm filming a TV pilot. Uh, well, and it's basically live at the Apollo, but for unsigned comedians. Okay. What well, and we did the pilot uh, a few weeks ago in a pub in Glasgow. What well, and what? Well, uh, I was pulling the set list together, and the MC uh, Jimmy knows that I do stand up, and he was like, "How come you're knowing the bill?" And I'm like, 
well, I'm organizing the whole fucking event. And he was like, no, oh, you're going on the bill. And I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've not seen the, vi the video just yet, but I'm like, oh my God, because my parents were in the audience as well. And I was like. Wow, that's amazing. Well, <laughs> if you have it, I'd love to see it. You know, if it's available for public. Yeah. yeah. No, it will be. It will be Pro uh, yeah. next year. Well, start next year. What we're hoping it'll be done and ready to go. It's in in post, as they say, in post production. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what it's like, actually. Mm -hmm. You'll know that as well from doing when you did the album. Obviously, the mixing, the mastering, getting everything just right. Yeah, so much. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had to uh, do like you know kind of reshoots where you've had to go back into the studio and uh, tweak things or maybe make things well, fresh things up or was it like? Uh, well, I did this one and done we're all good no 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 there's definitely like there's the song where uh, I do the cover version for Be My Baby and uh, yeah. yeah there was just one like there, it was just one line and it just sounded so rough in my ears and the producer was like no I think it sounds fine and I was like that line I don't know what it is but it's just not sounding it and literally I had to play it in the car because then I'd have that version in in on a CD in the car mm. and I'd be like driving going what 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 how how can I describe what I want you know and like even put it into words and so then I had to go yeah to and fro um fro with the guy the producer guy and literally we got it to a T and it was like yeah like when he got it I was like yeah that's the sound I want and mm -hmm. yeah but it does take you know sometimes with music you actually can't always be engrossed in it like listening to it for like hours and hours you need a break and mm -hmm. you walk away from it and then tomorrow you might listen to it again and you see did it really sound as bad as it did yesterday you know and so forth mm -hmm. um, yeah there's a process yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember I were just doing that with the Flower of Scotland tracking and hearing just the one line so many times. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> well, I'm I'm dropping here, like getting my coffee quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crazy. You know? And if it wasn't for doing that, like, we wouldn't have actually met because that was how I'd met certain people who introduced us. Like, so, yes. yeah, it all came full circle. It really did. did. And thank you so much for inviting me again. No, definitely. Like, like I said, you were one of the first ones that came on. Like when, when I didn't have any faith in myself and I wasn't as confident on the mic as I am now. What like I was, what and what didn't didn't have didn't even have my glasses on back then because I was what like, because well uh, my kid hadn't tried to blind me at that point. What <laughs> like, so and now it's like yep, the glasses and the beard are part of the staple so much so that when I was like I was like I trimmed my beard down and people were like. Well, where's where's the beard? Why have you got a goatee now? <laughs> okay, I'm uh, okay. That's finally the bit of fame where they can't accept a look. I the look change. I will go back to the beard. <laughs> what little there is. You do you. You do yeah. you. It's great. I love it, and exactly. I love your background, the men's uh, gym show with the thank masks you. and everything. Great. Thank you so much. That's been the. It's been the fourth like kind of iteration of it. Like it just it's I, I look at it like me. It's kind of it's evolved and simplified, but at the core, it's still the same. I'm still mental. I'm still ginger. Yeah. That's what you've got to do. You've got to, you know, we evolve even as artists and creators, and mm -hmm. things have to evolve. They really do. Yeah. Um, but like I said, we remain the same. And um, yeah, and it's like little things that you notice afterwards. Like, do you ever look back in like old like demo tapes or old recordings? And then listen to that and then think about the stuff you're doing now and go, oh, wow, there really has been a change. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I definitely um, can relate to that uh, when I think about my voice and like recordings that I have even on my laptop. And we used to record because um, it was me and, a, and another guy, a Japanese guy, used to play guitar with me. Mm -hmm. And he had this thing where he would record us every time we performed. And I was like, I really hate you for doing this because I knew that I wasn't that good anyway. And I knew that he was going to say at the next rehearsal, he'd go, you see this? 1.02 minutes, hear your voice or hear the instrument or hear the rhythm that you're playing. That's wrong. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, I'd be like, seriously, like this is so boring. But you know mm. what? It 
it was so good. It was such good training for me to be to be able to listen to myself and go, oh, I'm really getting this wrong. And I, I remember leaving the rehearsal and being on the bus in London and like practicing this new rhythm, like that, 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 that. that I, now it comes naturally to me, but mm. at the time I was like, how do I do it? And I had to do this rhythm on accordion. And because I didn't have the accordion with me on the bus, I was just like doing it on my, on my legs, like da, mm. da, 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 and so forth. And now it kind of feels, yeah, it's a Brazilian kind of samba um, rhythm and it kind of feels normal. Um, and mm. then, yeah, the voice was not what it was. I think even my speaking has probably changed a bit in terms that it's gone down a bit. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's, it's interesting, like, I wasn't confident, you know, that confident in my voice. I don't think I even believed in myself. And the voice wasn't, you know, they say your voice is like a muscle. Mm -hmm. I don't think it had really done its exercise. So now I realise that you also don't sing from your throat and that you mm -hmm. have to sing more from your diaphragm. So that's like understanding all of that. And that mm -hmm. normally after um, a performance, I actually feel like I've done a whole exercise within yeah. here like you're literally breathing all the time and it's your diaphragm just going like that mm -hmm. oh definitely and it's just been great yeah. to actually get to see you and what like, how well that you've done what just your journey has been fantastic i know it's definitely not the end it's only the beginning like you're just going to get better and, and stronger what and yeah just what like, Next, next time when I ask you back and you're playing, like, doing your Portuguese tour, just make sure you, you give a, a wee plug to the little ginger guy that still believes in me. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you can come and see me, you and your whole family. Yeah, bring the Factor 60 it. and I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you're is so all sweet. the Thank you. Yes, well, uh, very welcome. Well, that is all the time we've got for this episode. My faithful followers, I've been Andrew Durning. Well, it's been so great to have Talia back on. What? Well, uh, you can find her on all the socials you go on my socials are there give her some support check out the Facebook lives because they are pretty damn good well, and yeah if she's on the Portuguese tour we're all going to Portugal <laughs> so until next time take care stay safe bye bye